Having conquered the basics of Chopper, such as making HTTP requests in the previous part, it's time to take a detailed look at interceptors. They are a bit more high-level components of Chopper, and they are used to perform some actions right before sending out the request, or right after receiving a response. Hello, welcome to Resell Coder and an interceptor can be used for example to display a message like this that downloading large files on a mobile data connection may incur costs. So this is what we are going to implement at the end of this second part of the Chopper series. If we switch to Wi-Fi here and then I will restart the app on my second monitor and this message will not be shown because now we are on Wi-Fi and not on mobile data. And be sure to check out the written tutorial from the link in the description where you can also find all of the code written in this video and links to all of the libraries. Before we can do something as elaborate as this though, let's go through the basics of interceptors with Chopper. The nature of interceptors is that they run with every request or response performed on a Chopper client. And Chopper client is specified from our previous part of this tutorial series, which you can check out from the card in the corner, right over inside post API service dot dart. Right here, we are creating, instantiating a new client. And all of the interceptors are client-wide, which means that you add them to the client itself inside a list of interceptors like this. This list will hold all of the interceptors. And this word client-wide is important because in the previous part you learned that Chopper has the concept of Chopper services, we have only one service, which is the POST API service, which operates with the JSON placeholder POSTS endpoint to receive the fake POSTS from the API to display them nicely in this list view. And then also the single POST can be displayed on a separate page. And as we are doing here, one service is reserved for one endpoint. If we were to operate, for example, with comments or with photos or with something else on that API, maybe a to-do list, you would have multiple of these services for each and every endpoint. So for example, you would have comments, service, to-do service, and so on. And usually multiple services use only a single chopper client. So these interceptors are applied to all of the services using this particular Chopper client. Before we are going to jump into our own interceptors, let's take a look at some of the built-in interceptors because Chopper is an awesome library and it comes bundled with a couple of useful ones. The first one we are going to take a look at is the headers interceptor. And to add an interceptor over to the app, you just specify it inside this list of interceptors on the Chopper client. So let's say headers interceptor and a headers interceptor adds a header to each and every request pushed by the chopper client. So we are going to add a header. The header name will be cache control. Just some header, you can specify whatever header you wish. And we're going to say no cache. This is actually not going to have any effect whatsoever because the API doesn't expect us to pass in cache control header, but still we can pass it in. Nothing will happen though. So now if we were to run the app, we would get cache control header passed into every request. Actually, this ties in nicely with the next interceptor, which is HTTP logging interceptor because this HTTP logging interceptor will allow us to see detailed logs for every request and every response that there is with Chopper. Because currently we make some request and we just do not see it in the debug console. With HTTP logging interceptor, 
everything will be printed out to the console, including the headers. In order to make HTTP logging interceptor work, we need to do a little bit of setup because this interceptor, or actually the chopper library, uses a logging package which comes directly from the Dart theme. If you are interested, this is the logging packages uh, pub.dev page, but actually we do not need to import it ourselves because it's already being utilized by the chopper library, so chopper has already a dependency on it. So we can just go into our main.dart and to make the logs be displayed in the debug console, we're going to get into main function, we're going to make it into a regular uh, curly braced function here. We definitely do want to call run app, but also we're going to create a new function void setup logging. And inside of it, we are going to access the logger, which is just part of the logging package, which I have just shown you the pub.dev page for. So let's import logger from the logging package and we wanna access the root object something and uh, level will be level.all, meaning that we wanna print everything out, all levels, because there are multiple levels, for example, as you're familiar with from Android development, if you're an Android developer, you have info, severe, shout, warning, all of that are levels, and we wanna display all levels in the console. And then we are going to set a listener. So again, logger.root.onRecord. So every time a new record, so a new log is being logged on the logger, we wanna listen to that. And this accepts an anonymous function receiving the record. And we simply want to print out this record to the console. So we're going to print it out saying that interpolate it uh, record dot level dot name will be first displayed in the console. And then we're going to display the records time. So rec dot time. And then we're going to display the records message. This will be really familiar to you once you see it actually printed out in the console. And then we mustn't forget to call setup logging inside the main function. So once we have that, we go into post API service and we hit save. And now we can hit F5 to run the app. And we are going to see everything locked into the console and also we are gonna see that the cache control header was added by the headers interceptor and here we go we can see that everything was loaded properly and we can also see that there are a lot of things being locked into the console so if i enlarge this we can see that even the contents of the json are being printed out but we are actually interested in whether or not the cache control was added to the header. And surely over here we can see that we've performed a get request for the post, which is true because inside home page, if I hide this console, we can see that as soon as the home page, which displays the list, is loaded, it performs a get request on the posts right here inside this future builder we call get post on the post api service so now if we go back to the console we can see that the cache control header was added then we end the get request and then we also get everything printed out from the response which in this case is 200 okay response which is a good thing we don't have any errors here and everything from that response is printed out. Now, let's take a look at another interceptor, which is not as useful as the two previous ones, and those being the header interceptor and also the 
HTTP logging interceptor, the next one is something which you may want or may not want to use, but it's definitely good to know. That one is the curl interceptor. Curl is a way to call HTTP methods from the command line, from the terminal, and this curl interceptor will simply print out the curl command which you can use in the terminal to perform the same request as was called by the chopper library. So let's take a look at it. We are going to comment out these two interceptors, or actually we can leave the headers interceptor in here. We're just going to comment out the HTTP logging interceptor. And now once we save it and also hit control shift F5 to hot restart, not hot reload, but hot restart the app, we'll see that we still get the posts nicely loaded. But if we now go into the debug console, we will see the curl command, which we can call to perform the same kind of a get request on the API, which is curl vx get header is cache control, no cache, and so on and so on. Now that we know something about the built in interceptors, let's create our own custom interceptors to add our own custom logic to them. Whether you want to create request interceptors or response interceptors, they both can be done in two ways. You can either add simple anonymous functions to this interceptors list, or you can also create a fully blown classes implementing a request interceptor abstract class or a response interceptor abstract class. Let's first take a look at the anonymous functions way. And these are perfect for quick little interceptors, which do not contain a lot of logic. In my opinion, it's better to create fully blown classes because otherwise you will end up with a messy code base because as always, the single responsibility principle is king. But if you don't mind trading in a single responsibility principle for quickness of implementation, uh, this is how you can define the anonymous interceptors. They are simply a function which receives either a request or a response. So let's say request for this one. This will be a request interceptor. Let's name it request. And it's going to be an asynchronous anonymous function. So pretty standard Dart stuff in here. And inside of it, you can do whatever you want. Let's for now, for example, check the requests method. So if request.method is equal to HTTP method.post, we are going to simply access the chopper logger, which is uh, using the logging package. So chopper logger, which comes from chopper.info, which is when I provide an informational message. And the message will be, for example, perform the post request. I know this is really useful to know, but still, this is just an example. So bear with me here. We're going to return a request. You mustn't forget to return request. Because if you do forget to return the request or the response from the response interceptor, you are going to make the other interceptors, for example, this curl one, or even other chopper code receive a null request or a null response. Because if you don't return anything, obviously nothing will be returned and the code in chopper is done in such a way that uh, basically if you don't return anything, you're going to return null. And you know what happens when something tries to call some code on a null object. You're going to get an exception. And you definitely do not want to have null exceptions everywhere. So that's why you must make sure that you always return a request. Because sadly, how it's done currently in Chopper or in Dart, if we do not return a request, we don't get any kind of a compiler warning. We get only a runtime crash. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that's happening. But still, you aren't going to get any compile time error. So uh, just you've got to remember that you have to return request even though you do not have any compile time error, you will get a runtime error. We can actually try it. So let's uh, 
restart the app and we are going to get a crash. Of course, as you can see, no such method error, the method to base request somewhere in the chopper code was called on null. However, if we come back and make it return request, we are going to get rid after restarting the app, we are going to get rid of the error because the null is nowhere present anymore. And now if we go into the app and try to do a pose request by, if you remember from the previous part, by clicking on the floating action button, right? And we go to the console, we can make it smaller. Still, we get some flutter errors, which we do not need to really worry about. And here we can see that we have performed a post request. Then, of course, you can also have response interceptors for when the response is gotten from the API. So you're just going to change requests to say response. So response, response. And inside of here, we can check, for example, still return response. And we can check, for example, if response status code is maybe 404. And then we are going to print out severe, severe problem. We have a severe problem that 404 not found. And of course, you could do some more elaborate logic in here than just print it out to the log. You can contact your stats server, maybe your Firebase analytics. You can add it over there. You can do anything you want inside these interceptors. All right, so as you can already see, even though that these two interceptors, these anonymous methods are quite short and they do not contain a lot of logic, they are still cluttering up this interceptors list. In order to give your interceptors a bit more structure, you can create a separate class for your interceptors, whether for a request interceptor or for a response interceptor. We're going to create our own request interceptor and we're going to call it mobile data interceptor. So let's create a new file under data and we're going to call it mobile data interceptor dot dart. Before implementing this mobile data interceptor, we are going to add one package to the project's pubspec.yaml file and that is connectivity. All of the links to these libraries are inside the written tutorial on resocoder.com to which you can get by clicking on the link in the video description. Or you can also just go to pub.dev and search for connectivity. So just search for that. And the first package over here is what we want to get. So just copy the dependency. And now we're going to go into pubspec.yaml, paste it in here, save that because this package operates with some native functionality, we actually need to stop the app completely and run it again. So let's go to our mobile data interceptor and let's hit F5. And well, what do we want to do inside this interceptor? We want to have a class mobile data interceptor, which will implement request interceptor so let's import request interceptor from chopper.dart and mobile data interceptor needs to have one function overridden, which is on request. And over here, what we want to do is to get the current state of connectivity. And from it, we are going to be able to determine whether we are on mobile or on Wi-Fi. And if the user is on a mobile connection and he's trying to access some large files, which we are going to determine by checking if the URL contains a certain endpoint, we are going to throw a custom exception, which will be then handled inside the UI and a nice message will be shown to the user. So let's get final connectivity result which will be gotten from awaiting and let's actually for that make this on request asynchronous so we want to await connectivity 
which is from the connectivity package, which we need to probably import manually. So import connectivity.dart. And we just simply want to call check connectivity. This will grant us a connectivity result instance. And now we can create a final boolean is mobile, which will be equal to whether connectivity result is equal to connectivity result mobile. So if this condition is true, the user is on mobile data. And then we also want to check if the user is trying to access large files. So we are going to store that inside a separate Boolean final is large file. And this is something which you need to implement your own logic for. In this case, we are going to perform a simple URL checking. The URL is just a string which can be accessed on the request passed into the interceptor. So if the request URL contains certain words, and we're going to use a regular expression to include multiple substrings here. So regular expression, and this regular expression needs to be marked with R in Dart. So R comes before the string, which contains the expression. And we want to check if the URL contains either endpoint slash large or so this regular or pipe uh, character or videos or video maybe video or again posts. So this is one way in which you can check for large files if the API for example has an endpoint and the API looks something like this. So HTTP colon slash slash API dot com forward slash large. And this contains some large file. Or maybe it has video endpoint. And this contains my video dot MP4, right? If your API is structured like this, that you know that on a certain endpoint here, it always has large files, you can perform your large file checking in a similar manner to this. And of course, we have added posts here, because posts endpoint is the one which we are actually using in the posts API service right here. This is actually the only endpoint that we are using. So that's why we've included it inside this mobile data interceptor to actually always get the exception. And now all that's left to do is that if is mobile and also is large file, then we want to throw an exception. And we're going to create a custom subclass or implementation of exception, just so that uh, we can differentiate between multiple exceptions quite nicely. So let's create a new class mobile data cost exception, which will implement the default Dart exception class. And we're going to give it a message final message, which will say something like downloading large files on a mobile data connection may incur costs. All right, I'm not gonna bother you with writing this message on video. And then we're going to override to string, which will simply just return the message. All right. And now we can throw this exception from this if statement, which checks if the user is on mobile and is trying to access large files. So just let's say throw the mobile data exception. And finally, again, don't forget to return request. Of course, the request will not be returned if the exception is thrown, but that doesn't matter because that will just stop the execution of all other code and it will short circuit basically. So then there will be no problem with the null instances of request. But if you do not return a request when no exception is thrown, only then there will be the null problem which will actually crash the app. 
Once we have this interceptor all implemented, let's go to post API service.dart and we are going to add this interceptor to our list of all interceptors on the chopper client. So mobile data interceptor. And let's import it over here. So now we can try and run the app. So let's hot restart it by hitting control shift F5. And we are all cool. We actually do not have the exception thrown. That's happening because the interceptor is working as it should, because now we are actually on Wi-Fi. So no exception should be thrown because we are cool. The user will not incur any additional mobile data costs because the user, us, is on Wi-Fi currently. But if we turn off Wi-Fi, and now you can see that we are on LTE here, we don't have any Wi-Fi connection. And now we hit Control F5 to hard restart. The initial thing here, the initial request, will trigger that exception. Of course, we have the problem that the app crashes currently, but that's just some weird Dart debugger thing in VS Code. It actually should not crash because the app will remain running just fine because exception handling is done inside homepage future builder here which calls the get posts method on the post API service. This is just the thing of a future builder in Flutter. Future builders simply handle exceptions for you basically. And all you need to do is to somehow display the content of the exception to the user. Because if we now go ahead and take a look, we can see that the app is running just fine, but we need to do some uh, additional checking for errors directly inside the future builder to check whether or not there is some kind of an error inside the future returned inside the future builder we are just going to say that if snapshot which is the async snapshot has error if it has error we know that some exception had occurred we just want to return a center widget which will contain a text and this text will hold the snapshots error convert it to string and then we're just going to align the text inside this text widget to be centered and finally we are going to set the text scale factor to 1.3 to make the text a bit bigger so now every exception will be nicely displayed to the user and still we are getting the app crash the presumable app crash which is not actually an app crash it's just some weird things happening with the dart debugger because dart debugger thinks that we are not handling this exception so it stops the code from execution but actually we are handling the exception not directly but it's handled for us by the future builder so if we again continue running the app we can see that the future builder has done its job because now a nice message is displayed to the user saying that downloading large files on a mobile data connection may incur costs and this is precisely what we want to be displayed whenever the user is trying to access the posts endpoint where is it? The post endpoint here specified inside the post API service on a mobile data connection. And also, by the way, if you are wondering what's going to happen when there is no internet connection, well, that case is actually handled by the HTTP package, which is the underlying package under Chopper, the default HTTP package, which you are probably all familiar with. So if we turn off Wi-Fi and also mobile data, so we have no internet access whatsoever. All right, so the emulator doesn't want to cooperate. So I'm going to go to settings. And from here, I am going to turn off or actually turn on airplane mode just to be safe. So now we really do not have any kind of data coming into the emulator. And now if I go back over to the app and hit hot restart 
in VS Code, we're going to be presented with a different kind of a message, which is not so nice looking. You can absolutely customize it to your liking if you handle the error somehow yourself. But still, we have an exception, socket exception, failed host lookup, which basically means we do not have any internet connection. Or it could also mean that you have mistyped the URL. That's another option. And that's it for this part. In the next one, you will learn how to convert the dynamic data, which is currently inside the response to a custom class using the amazing build value package. Because really currently we are always operating with some dynamic data. As you can see here, the list is of type dynamic and dynamic is just not cool in Dart because Dart supports types. So let's add types to this app and with chopper adding types is really simple if you do not want to miss the next part and also more tutorials like this subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you will join the notification squad and be notified about every new video that i upload because here on reso coder i am determined to provide you with the best app development resources and tutorials out there if this video helped you with understanding interceptors on Chopper, give it a like and also share it with other developers. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And see you in the next video.